of uh, Jonah chapter 1. I'm not going to preach a, about Jonah necessarily, just, just a thought here in his, uh, the story of Jonah. And uh, we'll look here tonight at what they told Jonah to do when Jonah got, was getting ready to get thrown overboard. And uh, here in Jonah chapter 1, the Bible said here, uh, when, the, when the waves were tossed, and as getting ready to sink, the ship was going down, they all jumped up and said, hey, everybody jump up and call on God, whoever your God is, call on them. So he said in verse 6, so the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God, if so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. Now, I'm going to do something a little bit different this evening, and I'm going to preach about somebody call 911. That's the phone number to be used in a crisis, a time of emergency. We are no doubt living in that time. Uh, we need help, we need it bad, and we need it quick. There's never been a mess the world in like it is tonight. Never. This world is in a collision course 90 miles an hour toward destruction. And the Bible talks about that. And the Bible warned it up. Thousands of times a day, people dial 911 that is used for car wrecks, plane crash, fires, violence, domestic fights, violence, heart attacks, strokes. And people are even wired up so when somebody calls, they are held on the line, if possible, till help comes. And what I'd like to ask you to do tonight, especially you parents and folks that are not going to camp this week, is for somebody here to dial heaven for us and hold on till help gets there. I'll never forget, uh, years ago, when the girls was little, uh, I think it was Carrie over there at the night holding big T right there. Uh, uh, she was about six or seven years old. And she, um, you know how all kids are, and they, she wanted this dog. And why let them have a dog every now and then? But she kept, somebody had some dogs and they wanted to get rid of them. And you, some of you have heard me tell this story before, but i never forget this. She, she won one of them little dogs so bad she couldn't stand it. And somebody had some little Cocker Spaniel dogs. They was about that big, just a few weeks old. And they was, their hair was the same color as my girl's hair. Uh, it looked, and it was uh, like blonde and, and light brown and all, all mixed up together. And them little old dogs, she won one so bad. She said, Daddy, can I have this dog? Daddy, can I have this dog? Daddy, can I have this dog? And I finally said, all right. I paid, like a nut, $50 for that dog. Now, uh, when, when, that was a long time ago when she was four years old. And that was a lot of money back then. You know, anybody with any sense, you don't, you don't pay money for a dog. Something will happen to it. Uh, you know, you get, old, you get an old dog out here somebody gives you, you can't kill it. You can run over it and it gets shot. Uh, yeah, but the neighbors and everything, don't feed it, and it'll be fine. You, sure as you pay a lot of money for one, something will happen to it. I'm just kidding there, sister. Except for them teeny weeny meeny weenies. Them things couldn't provide five minutes out in a while, could but, uh, but anyway, uh, I, I got her this dog. And it was about that big, and she named it Biscuit because that's, that's what it looked like. It was the color of a biscuit. And uh, we, we, uh, I wouldn't let her put it in the house, so we put it in this box about as, look, about twice as big as that right there, and put it in a box out in the yard. And we went off somewhere one night. And we, we went off somewhere one evening and left Biscuit out in the, in the, the, um, in the box there. Thank you. And uh, we, uh, we, we went out here, and, then, and when I come back, we come back up the driveway, and it was just had got dark, just got dark, and I pulled up in the yard, and I got out, and I thought, oh, Lord, sure as the world, that thing got out. And it had. It was gone. The box was empty. I thought, maybe she won't even, maybe she won't. You know better than to think something like that. She said, Daddy, 
daddy? Where's he at? I said, I don't know, honey. I don't think, Lord, I don't want to go out here hunting that stupid thing. Here in it dark, and there's snakes out, and it's, and it's, it's uh, up in the woods, and I don't know where it's at. She said, Daddy, where is it? I said, honey, I don't know. You probably don't even remember that, do you? Do you remember that? Huh? Uh, you don't remember this happening? Well, it did. She said, Daddy, where is it at? Daddy, where is it at? And I said, honey, I don't know. And she said, we got to find it. we got to find it. I thought, oh, my goodness. And it was weather about like this. That was, I mean, it was hot. And well, I thought, Lord, we'll get on a snake. And there's no telling where it's at. And there's briars and, and cuckle, uh, cuckleburrs and beggar lice and everything else. Uh, and these weeds. And we, I said, I don't know where in the world that thing's at. And all of a sudden, I heard something going, She said, is that my dog? And I said, that's it. I think I hear it, honey. She said, let's go get it. Where's it at? I can barely hear it. I thought, where's that stupid thing? <laughs> it's got to be out there somewhere. And you know, we live up in the holler. Some of y'all been to our house, you know. And the holler goes like this. Heel goes up. Heel goes down. Heel goes up. Heel goes down. And, it, and when, when it, something makes a noise, you can't really tell where it's coming from. Like, it can be over there, and the sound goes out and comes out down here somewhere, and it sounds like it's over here. We well, sound like he's up in the woods. And I said, well, all right, let me go get a flashlight. So I went and got the flashlight, and I had, I had her on one arm like this, and she's about that tall, and I had a flashlight in this hand. So here we went. And we went up through there, and I was shining that thing down. We were going through weeds and climbing over round trees and stuff like this, and I could still hear it hollering. I said, it sounded like it's over here. We wound the way, ran over a hump's too, up a hill and down a hill, and went down. finally went through some weeds and come out right in my neighbor's yard. We could have just walked down the driveway. And, and we didn't, and I said, I still hear it, honey. Down at trailers, some of y'all know, down below my house. And uh, I said, I hear it. We went around the front of there, and I could look, and I said, I hear it, I hear it. And it had got loose and went down there, and they had a trailer and had it underpin. You know how they have underpin on a trailer, and it had a little door there where you could get up under it, and they'd put him in there. And he, all you could see was his paws and his, and his mouth. And he's going, ah, 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 just like that. I said, there he is, baby. There's your dog. She said, get him, get him. I opened that door. I grabbed that little dog like that and put him on my shoulder. Had her like that and flashlight. And I went walking back up the hill. And I come up my driveway. And I remember going up that driveway. I thought, uh, they're on. And whereby and wherewithal. And received knowledge under the sun. Like Solomon did there in Proverbs. And I thought, you know what? I thought, you know what that little dog did? He, he, he dialed it up, buddy. He kept a hollering. And I thought, ain't that just like we do sometimes? Isn't that just like we do? We'll wander off and get out of God's will, get into some kind of sin, get into some mess, get all tangled up, can't get back. The devil gets you messed up on drugs. The devil gets you messed up in some kind of sin, and he gets you all trapped. That's what sin will do to you, trap you. And it's like, uh, you know what to do in a case like that? Just go, ah, ah. And the Lord looked down there from heaven and he'll say, I hear one of my youngins down there. He'll bring the Holy Ghost flashlight, come all the way down here from heaven and pick us up and put us on his shoulder and put us back in the will of God where we need to be. And I'm telling you tonight, kids, mamas and daddies, what we need tonight is the Lord once again to pick us up and put us back where we need to be on fire, living right, out of the pit, out of the bondage of sin, out of the drugs, out of the alcohol out of the junk of this world and back where we need to be with God. That's what we need right there. Now I want to show you something tonight. Joseph Stalin was a Marxist. Now all you kids listen to me. Marxism is communism. You know it as socialism. And if you live out here in the, in the world, you know it as Democrat. But it's, it's about the same thing. It's just about the same thing. Now, look, you might as well go ahead and say amen because it's the truth anyhow. And you hear me tonight? Joseph Stalin said this, quote, If we can effectively kill the national pride and patriotism of one generation, we will have won that nation. And brethren, they are on their way to try to kill our country tonight. 
It is a battle for the soul of our nation and for our young people and boys and girls. They say a young cub, a little baby bear, will uh, leave its mother sometime when it gets a little bit older and go in the jungles of Africa for the first time. And this little cub will go out and a gorilla comes by and knocks it down in the ditch. And about that time a leopard shoves him in the creek. And then about that time, a herd of elephants come by and almost stomp him to death. And then he finally comes back and he said, Mom, it's a jungle out there. And that's the way this old world is. This world will stomp on you. This world will devour you. This world will take everything that is right, everything that is godly, everything that is holy about and strip you of everything you've got right. Listen, if there's anything you kids need to get at camp this week, it's this. The world ain't your friend. It's not your friend. I don't care how many, how many TikTok videos uh, Britney Spears puts on or somebody puts on. That looks so cool. And, and, and Katy Perry and all them put on that. Listen, this world is not your friend. It's a disguise. It's, it's, a, it's a bait with a hook on the inside of it. And ladies and gentlemen, somebody, we need some parents that's willing to give up a meal or willing to give up some TV time or some internet time and stay on their knees and call heaven till the Lord sends us some help. There ain't many people willing to do it. Most of the older people said, well, we've seen the glory of God in our day, heck with this generation. Not many people willing to pay a price. Not many people willing to dial. You know what they tell you when they dial 911? The operator said, now you stay on the line until somebody gets there. You don't just call up and say, hey, I need some help, bye. You stay on the line till help comes. And somebody said this. Newt Gingrich made this quote. I'm, I don't know much about Newt Gingrich. Yeah, I guess he's all right, good, nice fella. But he said this. He said this right. He said it is impossible... Listen to me. It is impossible to maintain civilization with 12-year-olds having babies, 15-year-olds killing each other, 17-year-olds dying of venereal and sexually transmitted diseases, and 18-year-olds getting diplomas they can't even read. He said our society is unraveling. It's falling apart right before our eyes. It's being destroyed as we sit here tonight. God help us. God help us. Somebody call 911 till God comes. And by the way, don't complain about everything that's going on if you're not willing to spend time on your knees and call on God. He's the only one who can fix it anyway. I know a lot of Christians, they sit around and fuss about how bad everything is and never fast one meal, never knock on one door, never give out a track, never, hey, 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 you ought to shout when I say we're going visiting. You ought to shout when I say we're going to give out track. You ought to shout when we're going to do something for God. We ought to do our part because we're in trouble. We are killing in this country tonight 4,500 Babies a day. A day. 4,000 a day. Somebody told me the other day, they said, well, now when a baby's in its mother's womb, there's a lot of debate about whether it's really a person or not. Now, if you, don't, you, know, if you believe the Bible, there's no debate. There is no debate. In the Bible, the Holy Ghost called an unborn child, a child. And the Bible calls it a baby. And the Bible, even the Lord named some of them, like Jeremiah, like John the Baptist. When John the Baptist heard the news that Jesus was coming, he goes, bow, and his mama goes, whoa. Her belly sticks out about that far where his foot kicked her. He had a shouting spell inside of his mother's womb. So there's no, de no debate about whether an unborn child is really a child. You know, they perform partial birth abortions where the baby is partially born and a lot of times they survive the abortion laying on here on the table kicking, arms and legs moving and then you go ahead and just kill it. And that ain't wrong. That's not wrong. A kid laying there on the table 
kicking and screaming. Scott Peterson is in prison tonight for double homicide because he killed Lacey, his wife, and she was pregnant, and California, the hypocritical state, charged him with a double murder. But the doctor can get paid to do it the next day, and that's totally legal. And they'll find that's what this upcoming election, all this stuff's about, people. It's about abortion, it's about gay rights, it's about the oh listen, people, don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the news media. I'm telling you tonight, somebody needs to call on God. If he'll come and help us. Students spend over six billion dollars a year on alcohol. That's more than all, all their books and non-alcoholic drinks combined. The only reason half of them go to college is so they can party. And the mom and dad's so dumb they pay for it and they come back atheist. That's a dumb thing to do, brother. I'm not against education, but I'm telling you, I'd rather my girl not be able to spell good, which they can't, but no, they can. They can all three spell better than some people go to college. But I'd rather them not being able to spell good rather, and live right Amen. than go to some old hell hole and come back an atheist. Yes, Amen. Amen. There's, the, the Bible don't justify that kind of stuff. Hey, listen, brother, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. The answer is not in the White House. The answer is not in the schoolhouse. The answer is not in the courthouse. The answer is God's house right here. If my people, which are called by my name, it's up to us. We can't sit around and complain about how bad the world is unless we're willing to have you been? Have you knocked on anybody's door lately? Have you fasted lately? Or all you do is sit around and watch the news and your phone and fuss about stuff. Hey, you're, you're not right with God if all you do is sit around and look at that stupid phone and rather complain about how bad everything. Get on your knees. Call on God. That I can do something about it. I know I'm going to make some of you mad, but if I don't make somebody mad, I ain't doing much preaching no way. That's right. The current theological trend, preachers, is... Mutilated Bible, minimize sin, deify man, and humanize the Lord Jesus Christ. Preachers are forced to go along with the crowd and just give in and let the young people rock and roll and the old people sleep just to keep their churches. That's sad. A lot of churches have what they call a traditional service where the old people come in there don't know no better and they're dumb like old songs. And then they have a contemporary service when the young people come in and put the smoke and lights out and rock and roll for about an hour. And if, hey, listen, some of you sitting right here tonight, you're already leaning that way. You're leaning that way and you was raised different. You wasn't raised like that. You wasn't raised like that. You was raised in the old time way. We don't, we don't, we don't need no... We don't need a rock and roll show in here to substitute for God's power. Amen. Amen. My pastor said, if you compete with the world, they'll beat you. We got to have something they ain't got, and we do. We got to have something they ain't got, and we do. You get on the world's ground, you try to compete with them, they'll beat you. They got better musicians. They got better singers. They got better equipment. They got more money. They got cooler stages. We're not trying to compete with the world, brother. They can't compete with us when God honors his word and the Holy Spirit of God come. And they can't do nothing with that. It's better to be an old-fashioned and right than to be up-to-date and wrong. You know what they said Abraham Lincoln said one time? I'm not an expert on Abraham Lincoln's life, but they said one time, they said, Sir, if you do that or you believe that, you can lose the election. And he said, I'd rather be right than be president. Now, if he meant that, if he meant that, that's, that's a fine man, if he meant it. You don't find much of that anymore. Our 911 call should be, save yourselves from this untoward generation. I'm going to tell you something, and i got something I want you to listen to. Several years ago, a little girl was out playing, and she, like a lot of kids, got kidnapped. Somebody pulls up, you know, some candy, yep, hop in, grabs her, and takes off with her. She's six or seven years old and disappeared. And this was before everybody had cell phones.
and you call from like a like a uh, the old uh, pay phones out there, and people couldn't you couldn't be traced like that, like you can like you can now. And these people abducted her child, and her mom and daddy. Walked the floor. I can't imagine. That's one of the worst nightmares a parent's person could go through. Not knowing where they're at, who's got them, what they're doing to them, are they alive or dead. My, my, my. My heart goes out to anybody who has to go through that. Good night. And they waited, and the FBI came, and they searched, and they looked. One day they got a package in the mail. It was a strange looking package. And it had no, no address on it. And said to the parents of so and so, we have your daughter. And they had the end of her finger like that, cut off like that. And they said, we demand, I think $125,000 wired to a certain place at a certain time. Or we'll send her back piece by piece you give us what we want. A few weeks later, here comes another little piece of finger. And they went, they talked, please, what are we going to do? I don't know how that story ever turned out. But I'm telling you one thing, people. This world, it don't, don't you dare. Don't get this attitude of, oh man, the world's cool. We're going, man, we're going to have life and we're going to have a wonderful life and have fun. This world's not our home and this world is a wilderness this world's a bad, bad, bad place. The Bible calls it this present evil world. Every day, some kid somewhere dials 911. Get that ready for me, Dylan. I'm going to let you hear about 15 seconds of a little boy dialing 911. His dad come home drunk, shot the wife and killed her, Shot the mother-in-law and killed her. Turned the gun on himself and killed himself. A little boy, seven or eight years old, or maybe younger than that, dial 911. I want you to play that first one. Make sure you give it plenty loud so they can hear. Listen to this. He got a gun and killed mommy and nanny. He killed your mom and dad? He killed your mom and your grandma? Yeah, and daddy was over there, and then he got the gun and then killed himself. Is he, where is he now? Oh. I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. So I know, I know, honey. I'm sending the policeman and the fireman to help you, okay? What, well, what's going to happen to her? I, I don't know, baby. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. <laughs> I don't want you to touch the gun, okay? Okay. All right, you're being a big boy. You're helping me good, okay? I'm brave. I don't know. I know you're brave. I know, honey. Because this is what happened. Daddy got so mad when they came. He was just coming. And then he got the gun and shot Nani and Mommy. And then Mommy, she was trying to get away. But there was blood on the floor, and now there's blood on the um, wall. Okay, just stay on the phone, okay? Yeah, okay, I'll just stay away from Mommy, Nani, and Daddy. All right, stop right there now. I want you to listen to it one more time. And I don't know if you caught that at the last, but you're going to hear an experienced 911 operator. All she could say is, God. God. There's stuff going on in this world, people. There's stuff going on in this world, forces against these kids. Somebody, somebody better call on the Lord. It's up, it's up to me. It's up to you as a parent. This woman, all she could say is, God. And what comes right down to it, one of these days, life's going to be so bad that all you'll be able to do is just say, God. Oh, God. This little boy said, I'm brave. And she said, I know you are, baby. Stay on the line. I want you to hear him one more time. I don't know if you caught that or not. He said, what's going to happen to us? He thought, Mama's dead. Daddy's dead. Nani's dead. What's going to happen to us? Like me and my sister. What's going to happen to us? Did you know there's thousands of kids in America 
live that way every day. What's going to happen to me? Where am I going to live? Where's mama? Where's daddy? Frankie there? Where's he at? Does he spend some night in the police department? Boy, he had no idea where he was. There's Before we got him, the night, Tonight, while we sit here and enjoy ourselves, you're going out and you're going to eat and you're going to be eating ice cream and fellowship in the night, there's thousands of little kids thinking, what's going to happen to me? Where am I going to live? Mama's gone here. Daddy's drunk. DSS has got me. Where am I going to live? There's 300 kids in foster care in Burke County tonight. 300. They call us all the time. Well, they had not called lately, but they did call her all the time. We've got a baby. Can you take it? We got an eight year old. Can you take it? We got a 13 year old. Can you take it? All the time. That's just here in Morgan. Let's hear it one more time then. Listen to him say what's going to happen to us. Hi, Dad. He got a gun and killed mommy and nanny. He killed your mom and dad? He killed your mom and your grandma? Yeah, and daddy was over there, and then he got the gun and then killed himself. Well, is he, where is he now? I want you to stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay. I'm so... I know, I know, honey. Listen. I'm sending the policeman and the fireman to help you, okay? What, well, what's going to happen to her? I, I don't know, baby. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? Oh, Lord. Okay. Oh, Lord. I don't want oh. you to touch the gun, okay? Okay. All right, you're being a big boy. You're helping me good, okay? I'm brave. I don't know. I know you're brave. I know, honey. Because this is what happened. Daddy got so mad when they came. He was just coming. And then he got the gun and shot Nani and Mommy. And then Mommy, she was trying to get away. But there was blood on the floor, and now there's blood on the um, wall. Okay, just stay on the phone, okay? Yeah, okay. I'll just stay away from Mommy, Nani, and God. Daddy. Preacher, I want to do my part. I can't do much, but I want to do my part. I want to call on God. That could be any of our kids. That could be our grandkids. And might be before it's over with. How about mamas and daddies? Would you be willing to pray? Would you be willing to fast a meal or two this week? Would you be willing to just say, Lord, Lord, if you touch my kids, I'd sure appreciate it. I'd sure appreciate it, God. I'd sure appreciate it. Dear Lord, dear Lord, dear Lord, oh, God, I pray. Oh, God, I do pray in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, do a work in our heart. Lord, I'm asking you to work it out. We can run them buses. Lord, it, it breaks our heart to think about them kids not getting to come to church. Please, please, please open it up, Lord, that we could run our buses and rescue boys and girls. God bless churches and preachers and pastors everywhere. Dear Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit of God will come upon every single person here tonight. Lord, that you'd rebuke any spirit of unbelief wickedness or ungodliness and help us Lord to stand for you and do the right thing have your way in our hearts this evening do what ought to be done and we'll thank you for it the people's praying tonight all over the building the people up here in the altar praying tonight maybe you ought to just thank God that you had a family maybe you ought to just thank God you had a mama and a daddy maybe you ought to just thank God he's took care of your kids blessed them. They ain't been kidnapped. They ain't been mutilated and murdered. Thank God. 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 Yes, hallelujah. Amen.